Good morning. Today we're going to do a rear tire. All right, you got your little tabs. I put down a blanket. Let's remove these carefully. I laid them on the blanket and uh, they're out of the way. All right, the first thing we want to do is check belt tension. Before we take this apart, I'd like to know how everything is situated. So, when I put it back together. Right now, I'm looking at this belt. It should be between a quarter inch and seven sixteenths. They say 10 pounds of pressure. You push down, you could tell. With that, let me go to the scale. It's on here. Each one is an eighth. You look at your belt. And there you are. You can actually see the belt right on the bottom. And to me, it's a little over a quarter. Each one is an eighth, an eighth, an eighth. I would have to say it's three eighths. So three eighths we know is good. So with that, what I want to do is put a reference point. So what I did is I took a little white nail polish and I put a reference point on this cam. This is what does your adjustment for this belt. So I know when I take this apart and I go put it back together, I will want this white dot to match up with this one. And I know it's perfect. As you see, I did the same thing here. There's a white index. So I know at a quick look, this all matches up and everything is where it needs to be upon reinstalling this rear wheel. So there's no need to go crazy, taking measurements, doing all that again. Just make sure your white dots line up and uh, you're good. The belt tension is taken care of. All right, on this side of the bike, We need to pop this clip. 36 millimeters or an inch and three eighths. With my gun, I'm gonna slide it. The torque value on this nut is between 90 and 105 foot pounds. So, the gun helps. When I install it, I don't use a gun. Then I wrench it down slowly, 20 pounds, and then all the way to 60, 80, and so on. So what this will do, push this one inch axle out, and this will be in its place. So now, this is only a half inch. That will give me a little more room to work, remove my belt, and remove this brake. Right now, I'm just gonna hit it. We take this adjustment for our belt, our drive belt, and put it aside. Now we have to go to the other side of the bike and remove one or two things. This half inch hardware on the slip-ons. I remove these two half inch, the pipe drops down, and we can clear it. This bar will be in the way. With that, we'll just loosen this up, this up, this plate, this plate, and get the bar out of our way. So what we did was we moved these two off this back, and this, I wanna remove this bar so this axle has no problems. Now you'll notice there's an Allen head and a little 11 millimeter. All right, I'm gonna put this on this cardboard right there. Now what you wanna do, now as you see, now this will clear. With that, let's go to the other side. This is where this half inch steel rod comes in. Now let me show you.
show you the other side. So, I'm threading that half inch through. Axles out. Now, as you see, that half inch steel rod is right there. Now, I could push this back tire. It's just barely on the ground. Now, from the bottom, I take the belt. My belt is free. I put it right by the shock and it's totally out of the way. With that, I go to the other side. Now I'm going to jack the bike up. What I want to do is put a jack under this wheel. Now, as you see, I have the jack under the wheel. That takes the pressure off. I still got my steel bar in there, but we need to remove this. So by doing that, we will push this through and slide this up. What you want to do this wheel is being the pressure. You got to remove your side cover. All right. This must be removed. If you don't remove this, when you drop this wheel, it's going to hit the side of your mag on your rear wheel. You really don't want to do that. Now, by pushing that bar through there, This spacer, put that on the ground. Now this is looser. Now you gotta work this out. Jiggle it back and forth. Get your screwdriver. Take the pads. And try to open them a little bit, giving yourself some room. this just in the right spot It fell out on the other side. It gives us just enough room. Out. 
Now with that, we got the tire is off, removed. And that wasn't that bad, one person. So now, as you notice, that little half inch replacement axle that I threaded in there, gives you just the right wiggle room to move this around without bending your rotor or scratching your rim. With that, we'll have a new tire put on and then we will reinstall. Okay, now we're gonna reinstall this rear wheel. Same thing, but in reverse. Get it under there and take your time. Don't. A little at a time. Now we have it in the hole. Now to put the jack under it. Just wheel it right on as you push the jack. Beautiful thing. What I like to do is to get this on. Okay. Nice and easy. most important all right what we want to do is get this onto this bracket here clean it up now you gotta slide it on now you'll know when you got it right now there you go. Slide that. One hand and your jack. And this side's all lined up and put together. Now with this half inch steel rod in place. Now if you were trying to do this with the one inch axle, you don't got much wiggle room. I believe this just makes the job a lot easier. You ain't beating yourself up to get this caliper in place. You ain't beating yourself up to get the bushing on the other side. Cause now we gotta go to the other side and put the last spacer in. Jack it a little bit. Now we got that half inch bar, as you see. Remove the jack, lower it. Now, you see the way I have the belt? We got that half inch rod, so that gives us plenty of room. Well, should I say, just enough room to do what we need to do. I slide that on there. Now I just turn it. It don't get no easier than that, it really don't. Belt is on. you on your low side. That came out of the other side. Beautiful. All I did was make a little adjustment on the caliper. As you see, it went pretty much done. Now let's make sure this don't get us in trouble. Now 
me see. Don't get no easier than that. Tires reinstalled. So as I was showing, there's a little steel rod. She's smooth, so it can't scuff nothing up. And uh, it really helps out because it gives you just enough room to get a little more. Now, if you're working with this one-inch axle, hey, you ain't moving nothing around. With this, you can move around and get this caliper in there and that spacer on the left side. So this really, this really helps out. Home Depot, anywhere, a little piece of steel rod. So now we put the little cam eccentric on there. You'll see there's a little flat spot. You'll see the flat spot there. Beautiful thing. What we want to do is now put this inch and three eighths on and torque it to 20 foot pounds. All right. Now with my inch and three eighths or 36 millimeters. What I want to do is you see the white mark and you see the white mark. Let's bring them together. Now that's right where that belt was. With that, I'm going to grab a torque. Now we're on the other side. Now you could see where the white is on this side. It's all lined up. So now I'm just going to torque this down, as the book calls for, 20 pounds. And then we'll check the adjustment and then torque it. The final torque is 110. Twenty pounds is just to set the axle so it don't spin freely. Right, I like that. Now let's double check. Utmost important. Tight. Go check the other side. Beautiful. Now I'm going to go to sixty. Thirty. Holding the other ratchet. That's 60. Now let's take a look. You can see that moved a little bit. Get on the other side and straighten it out. Now she's perfect. Now, as you see, it's perfectly lined up at 60 pounds. That's a hundred. Let's check it again. Now, we see our index, that white, is perfect. Let's put this clip back on. Keep the 
brakes a few times. Beautiful. Now we'll go to the other side, check all that out. Now as you see, the white dot. And now, the thing I like about indexing this is, if I take my bags off, I look at it, I can see nothing has moved. So, I know, if, did my belt stretch? Or did this loosen up? Now, all I gotta do is reinstall this bar, clip the exhaust, and put the bags on, put my covers on, and we're done. With that. Spray. I hate handprints. You get your bike back, there's all prints on it. Pipes look good. I love these bikes. All right, this was done on a 2002 Road King. It's the same procedure for most Harley Davidsons. Common sense, some tools, but that axle, that half inch temporary axle makes it a lot easier. It really does. And this stand. Any questions, just ask. And if you can, thumbs up, subscribe, and leave a comment if you have a better way, a different way, another way to do it. We're all willing to hear. We're all willing to learn. All right, ride safe. Have a great day.